Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Come on in the room. Come on. This is Monday, Monday, and it is the first day of our week is first day of those of us that are going to work this morning. Good morning to you, Sister Natalie. First day of the week for us that are, come on, you're getting up and we're getting ourselves together, getting ourselves in order this morning. And we're just blessing God because he is great. He is greatly to be praised, greatly to be honored and adored. He's greatly, my God, to be magnified in our homes and our houses. And for those of you who are just getting up, I just, good morning to you, Sister Patrice. Good morning to you, Sister Nicole. For those of you who are just getting up, why don't you just give the Lord just a big thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, sometimes we don't even think about how good God is, but he is better than that. However good you think he is, he is better than that. Good morning to you, Sister Terry. To all of you, good morning. We are going to get right into what the Lord has for us on this morning. I'm telling you, and it's good. I've been, I was just sitting here just <laughs> meditating on the word of God, um, just thinking about how good God is and what the Lord continues to do in our life and how he continues to bless and heal and deliver. And, and my God, the things that we think are for our demise, the things we think are to get us off focus and the things that we think are um, just to mess us up. You know, sometimes we don't know that God is using that thing to bring us into victory. So just like in our story on today, day. We, I know we thought that Penina was provoking us for a reason, that she was just trying to get us off focus and get us off track. But you know what? God was using her all the time. And sometimes the, our enemies don't even know that they're being used for our victory. Good morning to you, Bishop Jones. Thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast this morning. Thank you also for the word that you're going to share at 6 a.m. And we're going to be listening. We're going to be watching for that breakfast that you're going to be having this morning as well. Good morning to you, Dr. Evelyn, Sister Miller. Good morning, Sister Mary. God bless you. God bless all of you this morning. We're going to pray. And listen, I'm telling you, this is going to be good. So you may as well just start pushing that share button right now. Sister Phyllis, good morning to you. Father God, we just bless your name. We thank you, Lord God, because you are great. Lord God, we there is nothing that we can say to describe God, your magnificence. God, how much you just love us and how you heal, deliver, Lord God, and set free, Lord God. We just praise you just for who you are. So God, we thank you for this word that it shall fall on good ground, O oh Lord God, and that God shall prick the hearts of men and women that hear it, that when they hear it, Lord God, they will be changed, God, delivered, God, from the attitudes that perhaps they had, Lord God, about people who they think are provoking them, Lord God, and they will use this word, God, for their benefit and for your glory, and for that we will say, thank you, Jesus, amen, amen. Good morning to all of you. Listen, we're staying in um, Samuel today, and um, as I was, was um, good morning to you, Sister Diane. Anna, as I was oh, in that study about Hannah, I began to think about the other wife, the other woman. Oh, maybe I should have titled it the other woman. I started to think about the other woman and her provoking Hannah and what that was all about and, and how I did not see how the husband, how Elkanah, how he never even said anything. And then in the word of God, it didn't say that he said to Penina, you know, leave her alone. He didn't say anything like that. I didn't even see where God got on Penina. I didn't see that either. I didn't really even see where Hannah was like, girl, if you don't get off my back. She, I didn't see her say that. Um, good morning to you, Sister Elaine, because you know, many of us, when we are in a down position, a downward state, and we and others are provoking us. Others are uh, trying to get at us. Come on, we're going to get back with them, right? We're going to get right back with them. We're not going to allow them just to, to chide us, to provoke us, try to make us, you know, feel bad about a situation that we are in. Because you know, in this case, uh, I'll read just a few, a few verses, a few that I picked out for you this morning, because you know the story now. And you know about Hannah and her great faith, and you know about what happened, particularly as we went to chapter two, but chapter verse number uh, two in chapter one, it just says, and he, Elkanah, he had two wives. The name was Hannah, and the other name was Penina. Hannah, by the way, it meant favor. Penina meant rose. It, 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 it was not a bad name still. And that's why I said, let me see what's going on with this lady right here, with the other woman. Penina had children, but Hannah didn't have any children. And her, her rival, 
her rival, in this case, it was Penina. She provoked her. Remember that word. She provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. And then she made a vow. Hannah, she made a vow. This is verse number 11. She made a vow to the Lord and she said, Oh Lord of hosts, if you just will indeed look on my afflictions. We talked about that. If you, if you just do what I'm asking you to do, then I'm going to do something for you. She said, if you look on my afflictions, she says, and remember me and not forget your maidservant. She said, don't forget me, Lord. If you do that, then I will give you back this male child. She says, I want a male child. But if you remember me, I'm going to give him back to you, Lord, all the days of his life. And then she said, no razor will come upon his head. Verse number 12 says, and it happened as she continued praying. Remember that. I want you to stick a pen in that. And the Elkanah had two wives. The wives provoked him. Hannah made a vow. She prayed and she continued praying before the Lord. And then I go all the way down to verse number 20. It says, so it came to pass in the process of time, Deacon Mary, that Hannah conceived and bore a son. Her prayer was answered and, and she called his name Samuel saying, because I have asked him for the Lord. The Lord gave me this son. And then I go to verse chapter number two and Hannah still praying. She's still praying and Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord my horn is exalted in the Lord. And then I get down to 26. And the word says, And the child Samuel grew in stature and in favor both with the Lord and with men. And then I get to chapter 3. Chapter 3. Verse number 19 just says this. So Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and let none of the words fall to the ground. That was the words that the Lord has spoken to Samuel. And all of Israel from Dan for Sheba knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord. Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel and Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Sometimes those who you think are your enemies, they are just setting you up for God to bless you. Ah, let me say that again. The people that you think are your enemies are just setting you up for God to bless you. And instead of us getting back at them, getting with them, come on, pulling, pulling, pulling back, the old man, the old woman, instead of us doing that, we've got to keep, just like Hannah did, keep our focus on the Lord because we don't know what God has in store. And just like we don't know it, our enemies don't know it either. And our enemies don't know that they are being used by God to bless us. My enemies don't know that they are being used by God to bless me. But when I, but listen, when I then come on, raise up against my enemies and I cause my enemies to turn around from what they're doing, come on, that may cause me to miss out temporarily on what God has for me. Sometimes I need to just keep my mouth quiet and keep my focus on God and not on my enemies. And just as Hannah did, pray to the Lord, that the Lord will do what it is that I'm asking him to do. Because we know that Penina had children, she had sons and daughters, and Hannah was just desperate for one of them. And what, what do you do when things are going well for people around you? What do you do when, when it seems like they're just moving ahead of you and, and it seems like everything you do, come on, it doesn't get you forward, but it seems like you're going, you're taking steps backwards. Come on, Hannah was in the place, even, even her husband, Elkanah, he said, listen, I'm giving you, Hannah, I'm giving you a double portion. I understand you don't have children, but I'm giving you a double portion. Is that not enough for you? Come on, sometimes we see those, we, we think they're getting ahead, but God is all in it. He is in the plan. I want to show you, I looked up the word provoke because I was interested in, I was, I was interested in Penina and I wanted to know what was her motive, what what was she on 
Because sometimes I say to you, you don't have to fight for what's already yours. Come on, you don't have to fight for what's already yours. Penina already had children. She already was the husband or the wife of Elkanah. She already had him as her husband. So she didn't have to fight for that. She already had children. So she didn't have to fight for that. She already had sons. So she didn't have to fight for that. She already had resources. She had, listen, uh, uh, Elkanah was giving her a portion. So she didn't have to fight for money. She didn't have to fight for that. So what, I wanted to know what was her deal, Bishop? I want to know what was her issue? What was her problem with Hannah, who appeared not to have anything, who appeared to be so in distress? All she wanted was a male child. What was the problem? I looked up the word provoke, and, and a provoke, I looked up with a couple of different definitions of it. And one of them was this. One of them was to stimulate or to, to give rise to reaction, to give rise to a reaction or an emotion. And sometimes people provoke you to give rise, to, just to make you react. Sometimes, listen, I'm going to set this thing up. I may not finish it today, but sometimes people provoke you just to make you react, just to see how you're going to act, just to see, my God, if you that anointed man or woman of God that you profess to be. They just provoke you just to see if you're going to fall down. They provoke you, my God, to see, come on, if you're going to cuss them out. They, go, they provoke you to see, my God, what you're going to do when you get in a crunch, when your back is up against the wall. They want to know what you're going to do. How are you going to handle it? Well, there was another definition, though, that the other one was to stimulate or to incite somebody to do something. Provoke. I think that was what Penina was doing. She didn't realize it, though. Because sometimes, listen, people can tell you that you're not going to do nothing. You're not going to. You can't do it. You can't record that song. You can't write that book. You can't get an A on that test. And, and sometimes you will either, it will stimulate you to react, to fight back at them. Because maybe in your mind you believe what they say. Or it can stimulate you, come on, incite you to do something else, to arouse something in you that says to you, in spite of what you say, I cannot do. I know that with the Lord, all things are possible. So that means that I'm going to try that much harder to make sure that whatever you say that I can't do, that it will happen. Come on, what are your enemies doing to you or how are they provoking you? Are they provoking you that you are going to sit down and, and, and fall into whatever it is that they're saying? Or are they provoking you enough that you're going to take your focus off of them? And you're going to put your focus on the one, my God, who can get you to what it is that you need to, to, get, to bring you victory. Are you going to put your focus on him? There were some lessons that we learned from Penina. And I say sometimes you need her. You need that provoking in your life to get where God wants for you to be. And I read those passages of scripture so that you would see, my God, through the provoking, you had to see God's hand in it. You had to see that God was at work in everything that was going on. Because the first thing, my God, you got to understand is, although we have emotions, you cannot let your emotions control you. You Come on, there's nothing wrong with being emotional. But as uh, Hannah was being provoked by Penina, she could have easily, I mean, it could have been a fight up in the house. Come on, women, you know it's difficult. Come on, have two grown women up in the house, especially when they both come on loving on the same man. Where they do that at? That wouldn't happen. And then you're going to have a nerve to talk about me because I don't have no children. Oh, it's on and popping. But not Hannah. Hannah did not allow her emotions to control her. Come on, that's what we, we couldn't do. It didn't, it, didn't, it didn't allow her to keep her from going to the house of God. I don't know how far, you know, her house was from the house of God, but they went there every year and they worshiped every year. And we got, come on, we got to have that same determination. Sometimes we stub our toe and it keeps us from going to the house of God. We get into a little tussle, argument 
whatever, with, with our spouse or with the children. It keeps us from going to the house of God. It keeps us from praying. We get all in our feelings about something and it keeps us from going to the house of God. But we cannot allow our emotions to control us just because Penina said to you, na 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 na, you can't have children. The Bible says that God closed up her womb. What does that mean? That means that there was a reason for that to happen. God, God did that. And so Hannah, through her faith, she had to trust in the Lord. Tr trust in him with all of her heart. But look, the Bible says, lead not to your own understanding. She didn't say, look, Penina, I don't know what you, what you tripping on. I don't know what's going on with you. She didn't say none of that. She just trusted in God. Psalms 125 and 1, it says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken and endures forever. Listen, when you trust in God, no matter what the noise is, the chatter is, what is going, come on, what's going on around you, you continue to keep your focus and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, Hannah, she was confused. She may have been frustrated. Come on. She didn't feel like her husband even felt what was going on. He couldn't feel her pain. But still, her emotions, she was not mad at him. She wasn't mad at the other woman. She did not want to miss her destiny. So she continued to focus on God. Listen, and let me that was my first lesson. Control your emotions when someone is trying to provoke you because keep in your back of your mind that provoking just may be for your good that provoking may be your setup for God to bless you to bring a blessing into your life a blessing a blessing into your home because as we know the end of the story the end of the story was that Samuel was favored by God and he was a blessing to all of Israel but if you get what I've been teaching over the last week, you see that the timing was perfect. It had to be all in God's timing. That's number two. Closed womb. God closed her womb. But he did not say she was barren. He just closed her womb, but he did not say she wasn't able to bear children. Because how many of you know that even after Hannah had Samuel, that Hannah had other children? Did you read that in the word of God? She had other children as well. And she didn't have to cry. She didn't have to snot about it because the Lord then opened her womb. He, did, he, he didn't make her barren. And I think sometimes, sometimes our enemies, our adversaries believe that, that they think maybe because we're not producing in a season that we're not going to ever produce. Come on. They think because uh, uh, we're not doing it right now that we're not going to ever come out of the situation. Maybe you don't have finances right now that, that you're not going to ever come out of that. Maybe I am the borrower right now, but come on. The Lord is setting me up. That I'm going to be the lender. Because I'm not always going to be the borrower. And sometimes, Sister Emma, we people think that because you're right now, you're, you're always begging. You're always asking that that's always where you're going to be. But that is not where God has you. Come on. You will make progress. You will prosper in the things of God. And if you continue to keep your focus on him and not on those that are provoking. Come on. Come on, God's going to bless your socks off. Not only is he going to do that, he's going to show them. He's going to, because when they think that you're not going to come out, that's when he raises you up as mighty men and women of valor. And I'm telling you, when he showed you, he presents you before the people. He brings you before great men and women. He does that for you on your behalf. And then sometimes they think, you know, the people, the, the Peninas in your life, those that provoke you, they think that because they provoke you so much that, that you're going to get distracted from the mission that God has you on. And I'm telling you, people of God, you cannot get distracted. You cannot lose focus. Come on. Even Hannah. Hannah, whoo, man, she was targeted on that prayer. 
She was so targeted on what God had for her. Listen, she made that vow. She knew that she had to keep that vow. She says, listen, God, if you do this for me, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do this thing and I'm not going to take it back. She was so focused on that. But listen, even she didn't know what God had in store for her. We, we don't even know. The half has not been told. We don't even know what God has in store for us. But the Lord, my God, needed her to keep her eyes on him. And those Peninas, Sister Natalie, come on, they, they provoking us. They're, they saying, listen, you ain't going to do nothing. You're not going to be anything. Listen, sometimes, my God, ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes even as parents, mothers, listen, I'm, listen to me, mothers. Sometimes you're talking about your, your baby daddy and you tell them, you say, you just going to be like your daddy. You're going to be no good like him. Stop it. You stop it. Because listen, the curtain has not been even pulled on him. You don't even know what God has in store for him. And when you plant that seed in the minds of your children, you only allow your children to see what you see. Not seeing what God sees. Not seeing what God is going to do. But even as you're provoking them, I come on, I bless God and I pray it right now that the children, my God, will be provoked to action. That even what they see, my God, even though it may not be, but that they will be able to say, rise above it. And say, God, I rise above it. Listen, just as Jabez did when his mother named him Jabez because she bore him out of pain. And he said, Lord, bless me indeed. He said, in spite of what my mother, in spite of what my mother are calling me. In spite of what my mother has put on me, in spite of this curse that she has given to me, Lord, I want you to bless me indeed. Enlarge my territories, Lord. Increase my borders, oh Lord God. Keep me from running to evil. Mother, sometimes we put that on our children. But I pray today that they pray the prayer of Jabez. That they will reverse that curse, my God, that has been put on their lives. And sometimes as we are provoking them, the Bible tells us, don't provoke your children to wrath. Don't provoke them like that. But sometimes, listen, our adversaries make that mistake by thinking that they're going to get us off track and off focus. But then they forget about, sometimes when you provoke me, you provoke me to action. You provoke me to do the opposite of what it is that you think I'm going to do. Because Hannah's womb being closed, come on, God did that. He did that. He did that to display his glory. His glory. And sometimes, listen to me, Sister Raj, your delayed prosperity, your delayed breakthrough, your delayed deliverance is not barrenness. It's just a closed womb. A womb that is closed by God. So that when the delay is over, you will know the breakthrough was not by your power, but it was by the grace of God. It was by the power of God, not by your might, but by the power of God. Because listen, when people provoke you, Penina here, her provoking, ah, man, I got to get out of here. Her provoking was preordained by God, by heaven. It was preordained by heaven. Listen, P Penina had children. Hannah didn't have any. So Penina saw herself in a different place, in a different position than what Hannah, what she saw Hannah was in a position of. There are people, listen, who think they're ahead of you, come on, but you need to let them know that God is taking care of you. And not only is God taking care of you, that God is going to bring you higher. And God is bringing you to a place, my God, that's a different place from the place that they are in. They may think they're on top right now. But they just keep on watching you. Keep on watching what God is going to do in your life. And he's going to multiply things as never before. My God. Because what your enemies don't know, my God, is that uh, what they don't know is that God is behind them pushing you. Come on, enemies, push. God is behind them pushing you. And God is the one that's telling you, come on, tell Tina she can't make it. Tell Tina she can't do it. Tell Natalie it's over for her. 
tell Sister Miller she's too old. Come on. You're, God is behind them because God knows, my God, you are women and men of great faith. And because of that, you trust in God and you know that God said it's not over. God says you can do all things through Christ. God says, come on, he has the final say. God says you are victorious in all things. And because you know God and you believe God, my God, that all the more you know, come on, come on. He's pulling for you. He is pulling for you. Penina was just a tool in the hand of God. Come on, I, I recall Jesus being on the cross. I got to get out of here. I can't even finish it. I can recall Jesus being on the cross. Oh, when they put him up on the cross, they spit on him. They, they put the crown of thorns on his head. My God, they, he was thirsty. They gave him vinegar to drink. They down at his feet. Come on, shooting craps. They, come on, they're, 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 they're still getting his clothes. They, they're doing all manner of things to him. Mocking him. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. If they only knew, ah, if they only knew that when they call themselves killing Jesus, yes, Jesus, if they only knew that when they stuck that spear in his side, and when they called themselves killing him, that they were saving the entire world, if they only knew, that when they called themselves killing him, when they saw the blood and the water run out of him, if they only knew that when they put him, took, took him down and put him in that cross, and th in that tomb in three days, that he was going to rise up again, not only just rise, but rise with all power. If they only knew that, you think they would have done it? Come on, if the enemy only knew, my God, ugh, that when he killed my Savior, and he was going to get up and he was going to deal with the enemy, my God, and allow us, those of us, those yet in our sin, allow us a right to the tree of life. If they only knew, if he knew, the Lord said, forgive them, but they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them for how they're treating me. Forgive them for the nasty things that they're saying. Forgive them for what they're doing. Listen. Sometimes your paninas, those that you think are provoking you, they're provoking you to victory. I'm not done, people of God. I'm going to finish this on tomorrow. But there's somebody coming today that's going to provoke you. Somebody today is going to get on your last nerve. But I want you to know, come on, sometimes, sometimes it's at the hand of God. And God is trying to get you, my God, to move you to a different place in him. He's trying to elevate you to a different place in him. Through, yes, through your adversaries. They're pushing you. They're pushing you. Pushing you for better. Pushing you to do better. Pushing you to do something different. Come on, because sometimes if they don't push you to do something different, you're going to be sitting at that same mountain. Come on, how long? How long are we going to sit at this mountain? And we get angry at our adversaries. We get angry at those who push us. We get angry. But the Lord wants to know, how long are you going to sit at this mountain? Come on, I need, to, I need somebody to push you. I need somebody that's going to rub you the wrong way, like sandpaper. I need somebody to provoke you to do something different. To, because it's all in my plan. So I can't tell it to you. I can't reveal it to you because you might mess it up. But it's all in my plan. I need you to share this word with somebody and then invite them tomorrow when I finish this word. This word. Don't despise your paninas. Don't despise them because they could be setting you up for God to bless you. Father God, I just thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord God, for the kindness, Lord God, that you give us. We praise you, oh God, just for who you are, Lord, and Lord God, we lift your name, oh God. Because the Bible says when we lift you, Lord, you will draw all men unto yourself. Lord, continue, Lord God, to heal, God, deliver, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to set us free, oh God. Set us free, Lord God, from our emotions, Lord God, that will move us out of the destiny that you have for us. God, to help us and keep our eyes and our focus on you, Lord. No matter what goes on, no matter who comes against us, Lord God. 
God, let us know that it's all a part of your plan to bring us, God, to an expected end. It's not to destroy us, Lord God. It's, God, it's not to bring us in despair, God, but it is, God, to bring us to a good place, a healthy place in you. And Lord, we bless your name, Lord God, for the people of God, for those that are watching, Lord God, all over the land and country. God, for our viewers in the Bahamas, Lord, for those that are in Trinidad, Lord God, for those that are in Jamaica and the Virgin Islands, God, we bless your name for them. Continue to pray, God, restoration over them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Strengthen their hearts and their hands, oh God. Heal them, Lord God, from the crown of their head, God, to the soles of their feet, oh Lord God, that they may continue to trust in you. God, the God who can do anything but fail. Lord, we give you praise and glory in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, people of God. Listen, I love you all so much with the love of Jesus. This is Monday. You all have a wonderful day. But just recognize that when it feels like somebody is provoking you, when it feels like somebody is coming against you, why don't you ask God about it? Come on, don't get, don't get back at them. Don't get with them. Come on, but just know it is your season. Ah, yes. It is your season for God to bless you. It is your season for God to elevate you. And just as my God, that young lad Samuel grew, it took him some time to grow. It took him some time to be born, to be conceived, to be born, to grow into a young man, then to grow into an older man where he could rule, my God, the kingdom. It took some time. It's your season. Don't get out of the place where God wants to bless you. I love you all the love of Jesus. You go in peace.